Hi, in this episode I'm going to be discussing the HUD noise guideline. This is the Noise Engineers Podcast, episode number 15, or videocast, brought to you by Sound Solutions, an independent acoustical consulting firm at noiseengineers.com. I'm Bill Holiday. Thanks for joining me on this episode. I'm briefly going to go over the HUD, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development noise guideline. And it's really, there's two pieces to it. Determining if the exterior noise levels are within the range of acceptability. And then if they're not, if they're normally unacceptable, the second step is just determining or providing sufficient noise attenuation through the exterior components, the, the windows, walls, roof, ceiling, uh, doors, to meet the criteria inside. So let me quickly give one descriptor definition. They use the DNL noise level as their criteria, and that's the day-night level. It's a 24-hour descriptor and it's computed by averaging, not, not a normal arithmetic average. It's an energy average. You have to suck out the sound, the, the pressure, and then sum those up, uh, take the average, and then compress it back down into, or take the log, and get back to the uh, decibels, the sound level. So it's an energy average, but it's a 24-hour average. And what they do is you look at each hour, and then you add 10 dB to the nighttime hours, from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. You have to add 10 dB, and it's kind of a penalty. So if you have equal noise for 24 hours, those nighttime levels get a pretty hefty penalty because people are more sensitive to noise at night. It's when they want the least disturbance. So... Once you have that DNL noise level, the HUD code says that if it's if that level is 65 or less, you're acceptable. Nothing else needs to be done. Just show you're 65 or less, and you're done. And what they're looking at is the um, determine that sound level at a location that's two meters from the building of this housing unit, uh, in the direction of the predominant noise source. So. Uh, maybe I didn't say this, HUD says that if you want to get HUD funding for your housing project, it has to be in an acceptable environment and uh, needs to meet these noise criteria. So they're housing projects that we're looking at. The normally unacceptable range is from this DNL 65 to 75, and then above 75 is considered normally unacceptable. Now if you're in that mid-range, normally unacceptable, you can get special approvals, environmental uh, review and attenuation to get the levels down to an acceptable level. The acceptable level they consider 45 dBA interior, inside the units. So you have to look at the worst case units and if they meet it there, you just verify that they're going to meet it everywhere. And uh, let me go back to step one. So to determine what the exterior noise level is, they don't want you just to go out there with the meter for 24 hours because that's only going to give you the levels during that day um, when conditions could be such that aircraft is flying in a different direction or there's lighter traffic for some reason, some seasonal issue. So they want you to compute it. And they have tables and a, a brochure you can use or a booklet you can use to calculate it, or you can use their compute, their online uh, calculator. And they're mostly concerned about noise. Well, they're concerned about any noise sources, but the primary noise sources that we deal with are airports, tr uh, roads, highways, and rail uh, noise. And there could be other noise sources. It's definitely worth visiting the site and making observations to make sure you're uh, covering any sources there. But uh, what they look at is if you're looking at aircraft noise, each airport has noise contours already calculated. So you just look at where your property or where the property of concern is located in what contour. And so then you know the day-night level 
from the airport. For traffic noise, you look at the speed of the traffic, the distance to the road, the mix of traffic, cars, trucks, heavy trucks, um, and the um, visibility, how much of it can you see, what kind of barriers are in the way. Um, and then rail, number of cars, speed of the cars, how many times they go by in a 24-hour period. And so you can calculate a DNL for each noise source, then you sum them together and see if you have an issue. If you have an issue, again, there are tables to help you calculate this interior noise level, or you can use their computer, their online calculator. And what you need to do is have the, or determine the square footage, the area of the room of concern, and you just do worst case rooms, uh, the ones closest to the noise sources, and if they're different, do several rooms, of course, and the square footage of each exterior component, the exterior walls, exterior windows, exterior doors, come up with the sound transmission class for each of those components, and you can get a composite sound transmission class and uh, determine the noise level inside. You also need to know the room finishes, the echoiness of that interior room. So if it's a very absorptive room, like a living room, the noise levels will be a little lower than if it's in a kitchen or a very reverberant room. Uh, so you look at those components. If it cannot reduce the noise, so if we're looking at you're in the normally unacceptable range of 65 to 75, that means you need a 20 to 30 uh, dB noise reduction to make it acceptable. Um, if you can't make it with the components that are proposed, you have to propose new ones so that you can make it. Um, and that's, that's significant attenuation. Um, yeah, I think that's that's the basic. Those are the steps for the if it's unacceptable above 75 outside, then you really need special permission. It's and it's looked at on a case by case basis. I think that's it. That's all I wanted to go over with the HUD regulations. That wraps up episode number 15. Thank you for listening to the Noise Engineers podcast. Uh, we provide you with knowledge and resources to address acoustical issues. I'm Bill Holiday. This podcast is brought to you by Sound Solutions Acoustical Consulting at NoiseEngineers.com. As always, I appreciate your feedback. You can contact me. You can put a note here on the or a comment on the video. My email is Bill at NoiseEngineers.com or Facebook. Uh, website has other contact options. All right, thanks a lot.